Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in the slightly longer than 10 minute workshop this week, well it's the concluding part three of our install series. Yes, the install aftermath, the install is over. We're just going to find homes for all that gear. That's coming up next. Looks unnecessarily bright. Anyway, I'm back on the small camera. I'm just going to do a quick sort of vlog style, another quick vlog style thing, uh, following on from the installations. Uh, I've just come back from a big install, and uh, as you might have seen in the video snippets from before, uh, it's a real mess and this all has to be sorted out and again it's one of those things that never really gets talked about so I'm just going to run, going to pop you in a corner uh, uh, and have a bit of a running commentary about what I do and why I'm doing it uh, because it might be, might be of interest and, and maybe it won't be in which case you can move on and watch something else. Uh, here that Andy Mack over at Gosforth Handyman has got some good videos uh, and Keith Brown too, Rangamo Brown, he's good All right, so there we are. That's you clamp to a clamp to the thing, and you can sort of see me and what I'm doing here. Let's see where we go. Okay, so what I'm doing, uh, I've just got back from a big install, and I'm going through uh, my starting with the drill case, the drill box. It's uh, it's a real mess. Um, everything is just sort of thrown in here. Uh, because on an install you can't be too picky, you can't be too choosy, too precious about what you're doing. So first thing you do when you come back, uh, the, the two main drills, the heavier one and the lighter weight drill driver, get the batteries charged. In fact, I don't think I use the, uh, the little one much at all. And that battery is fully charged already. I put that in just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, so in that case, I'll just put the backup one in, the spare one as well. I don't travel. I don't travel. I don't carry a charger with me when I go out on an install uh, because I almost never use it. Uh, I'm, I'm not there long enough typically to drain you know, two batteries down. If I am, then I'm probably working too hard. Um, so again, all the little bits and pieces inside here, uh, just bits of rubbish really. Um, one of the things, uh, despite my <laughs> preparations, one of the things I managed to leave behind uh, was some ear defenders. So fortunately, I always keep a, a little spare backup pair uh, in the drill case, which is uh, very welcome because in a small echoey room, whacking holes into walls with a hammer drill or uh, e easing, shall we say, together some units, gets pretty loud pretty fast. And again, just make sure all the little bits and pieces are still in the box, screwdrivers and stuff. Now, this sort of thing that can really sort of throw you if you turn up somewhere for an installation and you don't have that one piece of kit, that one T20 Torx driver or whatever else. So that drill case is pretty much sorted. One thing that did scupper me was I couldn't find a masonry bit. Um, I have a whole load of Bosch multi-purpose bits and I, I, I could only find like a four mil so I ended up using that to drill the initial hole and then uh, opening it out with, a, with a, a bigger bit. So I don't know where they've gone. I need to track those down. It was just a plasterboard wall as it happens. Uh, so it wasn't a big deal but um, yeah, would have been a real headache had it been a brick wall. So that drill box is okay. We're going to move on to the unholy mess that is this one there. I'm going to put that away over there. That's the next job coming out. Uh, This is that? Okay, here we are. Right, so uh, this is the general kind of tool tote kind of thing that I have. My general install kit, and maybe we'll go through that in a separate video, is pretty much static. It doesn't really change. Um, what I do though is I put everything related to the specific job into this one. So yeah, this, this tool bag, tool tote sort of thing goes with me. Uh, for the for the general 
odds and ends really. I keep the other couple of pair of drill drivers in there. They're really workshop kit, but I take them with me because you never know. Uh, scribing, a little coping saw. That goes in the main kit. Little clamps normally live in the van, so they need to go back. And a couple of clamping squares, they live here. Club hammer, good drills. They're useful for when you, uh, they're cult drills. Um, uh, very minimal, very sharp, very minimal breakout uh, on the on the opposite side when you drill through for a cabinet handle or something like that. And really, a lot of this is just sorting out the crap. Frankly, uh, this bag also gets used as a sort of general bin and dumping ground when I'm doing a, an install, especially when I've left the uh, bin bags in the van. And can't be bothered to go back and get them. Hole saw. I didn't do a desk tidy. I'll have to follow up with that. Um, normally, you put a cable, cable access hole into desks. She didn't ask for it, but I should have offered. Squeezy filler, tube of glue, tape measure, some good pairs of gloves that can go in an end pocket. Hinges and plates, because you never know if one goes off. Little mini clamps, these are really handy actually. Tiny quick grip clamps. See those? Whoop. Zoom you in. They're only sort of, are they six inch? 150 mil? Might just about be, maybe five. But very handy. Get you out of a scrape kind of little clamps. Always worth keeping a couple of those uh, in either this kit or, or the drill case. Always worth having a couple of spare brushes with you, even if it's just for cleaning dust out of something. Even if you know you're not going to paint anything. It's a tissue. Ew. Spare ends for uh, sealant guns. It doesn't live in there. Again, that's the kind of thing that will really throw you if you end up not being able to find it. Uh, Jacob's check for one of the drills. Plugs and things should go in a side pocket along with packers and spacers. And other than that, she's not too bad. I can see the wood for the trees. Lots of little random bits and pieces in here. One thing I really struggle with is the smaller, the filler knives, those simple cheap flat filler knife packs that you get. There are never enough small ones. You know, there are little skinny ones. I've got one that are, the ends come off. I wonder if you could cut one of those down on a bandsaw or something. I suppose they're steel, but you know, something to try when I have five minutes, probably. Uh, glue sticks. I usually keep a couple in there as spares, but I don't need more than that. Hot glue gun, always useful for little bits and pieces on an install uh, when I make infills. I put little uh, feet, if you like, little MDF feet, but because you never quite know where they need to go, uh, it's, it's easy to glue them on uh, with a hot melt glue gun uh, while you're on site, so yeah. Always worth having a decent hot glue gun. Let's get 
some more of those really good plugs, those Gear Powers. And a little assortment of uh, bits and pieces. <coughs> okay. Gripper gloves, good torch, always goes in the uh, in this kit. Because you always need a good torch. That can go in there. And probably that too actually. Club hammer and bolster. Okay. So next we've got uh, yeah the joy that is this lot. These are screws that were related specifically to the job in hand um, and they don't necessarily go everywhere with every job so again I used to put them in the general sort of tool tote but it just ended up being such a mess you couldn't get to anything so I've started keeping them in this little uh, NFT sustainer I think spare blades for the coping saw. Shelf pin holes, shelf pin pegs, go back in there. Corner plates, always handy. There as well. Focus connectors, spare staples, back in there, plugs, can never have too many plugs. So next, all these screws and things just need to go back on their shelf so we know where to find them again, really. Four and a half by 70s, 60s, 40s, don't, don't have any 50s. Interesting. Uh, four by 40s specs. In. Ooh, so when I went out on this particular install, I had to rearrange the stacks a little bit. Uh, I don't normally take three rolling stacks with me. Uh, but I did this time because I had to needed some of that particular gear. But I don't normally take the uh, Festool connector kit with me. Domino connectors. Uh, and that's the pinner, which doesn't normally live in this stack. So that both pinners can come off there. Uh, that's the nailer, stapler, maestri, and the spot nails pinner. And then we can get these. Back. These are the lesser used tools, the jigsaw didn't use, but it's always worth having with you. And uh, the big Bosch uh, hammer drill, but the non SDS one. Again, the stuff I want to keep. Great. Uh, they're not worth getting rid of. And then that's the sanders. Yeah, we'll come do, we'll do a video on sanders before too long. I've got a few. So then there's just the madness of all these dust sheets and moving blankets that need to be tidied up and stored somewhere.
one of the headaches of doing an install, which is quite funny as of course. I tend to use up all your dust sheets to wrap the stuff up in. So you tend not to have any left to put down when you when you're going into somebody's house. I usually put one down in the hallway as I'm coming in just to make sure you you don't mess up the carpet, although uh, in this install there was a, uh, a wooden floor, so it wasn't a big deal, thankfully. I always try and stay mindful of other people's homes when you're working in them, because it's the sort of thing that doesn't always make a positive impression, but if you leave mucky footprints all the way down somebody's hallway, that will definitely make a negative impression. And a negative impression isn't necessarily of itself a bad thing, a bad idea. But of course it could put the customer in a more picky frame of mind where they might start looking at your work and thinking, well, you know, if that's how you treat my home, then let's see how careful you are about the job I'm paying you to do. And whilst I'm generally very happy with the quality of the work I do, you don't really want somebody in the frame of mind going through it looking for faults because that way lands, you know, that way ends in misery, I'm told. Not sure if I explained it thoroughly, but these are a mix of regular dust sheet dust sheets, 12 foot by 9 foot, uh, and stair runners. Stair runners are really handy, uh, the long sort of skinny ones, because they're particularly good for, for wrapping the sort of stuff up that I make. Because uh, you can wrap them, wrap them around like a bandage. Whereas the regular stuff is better for bigger things. So there we are. That's all of that. We just need to pop these round to the other side. Yeah, so that's how I go about uh, not driving myself crazy on these installations. Uh, it's a, just a question of, sort of trying to stay organised with it, really. Uh, and hopefully uh, these videos have, have been of some help and some benefit to you. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, share it freely amongst your friends and don't forget the best way not to miss one of my videos is to subscribe to the channel and if you do subscribe don't forget to hit that bell and then you'll be notified whenever I put up something new uh, but that's it for this week thanks for watching and I'll see you next time take care